Hello and welcome to this lesson, pilonidal diseases. Pilonidal diseases is one of the most important anorectal diseases that can cause discomfort in patients who are suffering from these diseases. And in this video, we are going to talk about everything that you need for your board examination. So first, let's understand what is pilonidal disease. First of all, note that this disease is also called jeep bottom disease or driver's bottom disease. And this is due to the fact that most of the patients who are suffering from this disease are having this disease due to the fact that they, ha they are having prolonged sitting or obesity. So pilus means hair and needle is coming from the singular form needles meaning nest. So in this disease, we have a nest of the hair which can cause chronic inflammations of glands that are embedded deep in the intergluteal cleft. And note that males are affected three times more than women, so this is a male dominance disease. And the mean age of onset for this disease is between 15 to 40 years of the age. And after 40, it is very uncommon to have this disease. And most of the patients who are suffering from disease are under the age of 30. So what is the pathophysiology? What is the sequence of events that leads to creation of pilonidal disease and sinuses? So first of all, note that in this disease, we have blockage of follicles in the intergluteal cleft. So as the result, we have constant inflammation and drainage of the pus. And as the result, we have creation of sinuses and pits in the intergluteal cleft. So these clefts are capable of vacuuming the loose hair in the anal area and as the result we have creation of hair tough in the pits. So because these pits are actually a foreign body, they are causing constant inflammation and persistent drainage and granulation formation happens in this group of patients. And we have two types of sinus creation. We have primary sinuses which are usually in the midline and we also have secondary sinuses which are usually in the lateral line. So what are the signs and symptoms of pilonidal diseases? Note that this disease can be presented in three main ways. So we can have abscess formation and acute abscesses which will be presented with, with acute pain, swelling in the gluteal cleft and also there can be drainage of the poster. But note that cellulitis, although it can happen, but because of the fact that most of the cysts are deep in the gluteal tissue, usually cellulitis will not be seen in this group of patients. So the second way that the disease can be presented can be due to the fact that the patient is suffering from chronic midline drainage. And this is due to the fact that the patient is suffering from recurrent inflammation and also creation of one or more pits in the gluteal area. And also we can have post-surgical diseases which will have chronic wound and non-healing wound in the, in the gluteal cleft. So in this picture, you can see if this is a normal follicle, we can have infection of normal follicle. And as the result, acute abscess can happen. And also the abscess can progress to the chronic phase and creation of the sinuses can also happen in this group of patients. Now let's talk about diagnosis and differential diagnosis for pilonidal disease and cyst. Note that in most cases, physical examination will be enough to make the diagnosis and laboratory testing has no role in diagnosis of pilonidal diseases. But sometimes during the surgery, the surgeon uses methyl and blue in order to identify the tracts that, that exist in the pilonidal disease and sinuses. So in, this, in the previous picture, if you uh, look at the picture, you can see that as the result of the disease, we can have tube and sinus formation and surgeon uses methyl and blue in order to identify the tracts that exist in the gluteal area. And differentials for pilonidal diseases are not actually very vast. If we have inferior pilonidal cyst, the disease can be presented very similar to anal fistula and differentiation can be also a little bit difficult. And also if the patient has pilonidal disease, the presentation can be very similar to hydroadenitis, which is inflammation of the glands in gluteal area. Now, what are the treatment options? If the patient is presented with acute abscesses, we can do incision and drainage for the patient. And this is usually enough in order to treat the patient. And antibiotics have limited role in pilonidal cyst diseases. But if the patient has significant inflammation or sepsis, 
or if the patient is in immunocompromised status, we can use antibiotics in order to prevent further complications. And if the patient is presented with chronic draining pilonidal pits, we can have for three months we can have conservative treatments so this is usually includes with repeated shaping and shaving of uh, anal area in order to remove the extra hair so we can have less tuft of hair in the pits and less inflammation and this can actually improve the signs and symptoms of the patient and also the patient is asked to bend over forward in order to in the shower in order to uh, have removal of extra hair but if after three months the conservative treatment doesn't respond very well we have surgical options so we have lateral incision and pit closure which can be done and this is actually a very minimally invasive disease and has the least complications uh, for the patients and note that in order to close the piece we also have an old method old surgical method which is called pilonidal cystectomy um, but this is actually very dangerous uh, surgery because it has uh, a very broad complete post-surgical complication for example the patient can have wound breakdown in the midline or non-healing wound in case of pilonidal cystectomy so the treatment for complex or recurrent pilonidal diseases has many surgical options which we can see in the picture we can have many different flaps that can be used for example the most famous one is limber flap or webster flap also there are other flap surgeries that are complex also we have cardiacus procedure and also bascom cleft leaf procedure you don't have to need them and how they are done for your board examination but note that we can also use phenol or, or thrombin injection in, uh, into the tract in order to destroy the tracts and closure of the pits and also note that if the pilonidal disease is left untreated we can have serious complications as the result so for example sacro sacral osteomyelitis necrotizing fasciitis and also in rare cases also meningitis can happen due to the fact that we, ha uh, we have involvement of meninges thank you for watching see you in the next video